So let me present you meanwhile. So Diego studied a bachelor in biology at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid. Then he moved to Canary Islands to pursue a bachelor in physics. And after that, he studied a master in theoretical physics at the Theoretical Institute of Physics in Madrid. And he's currently doing his PhD at Barcelona Supercomputing Center and working in quantum algorithms with emphasizing on these applications and the connections between number theory and quantum entanglement. And his talk is titled Quantum Singular Value Decomposer. So it's nice to see you again, Leo, and welcome. And the floor is yours. OK, thank you very much, Alba. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, nice series of uh, research seminars. OK, so uh, let's begin. Um, so uh, as Alba said, uh, I'm going to present a proposal for a quantum algorithm that uh, produces the uh, singular value decomposition of a pure uh, unknown uh, bipartite state. So uh, this job has been done in collaboration with uh, Carlos Bravo Pieto and Jose Ignacio Latorre. And uh, here you have the archive uh, reference in case you want to check it out. Okay, so uh, this is the basic outline of the talk I'm gonna give. Uh, so first I will talk about the classical singular value decomposition. And here by classical, uh, I mean that uh, how can we perform this uh, singular value decomposition uh, without having access uh, to a quantum computer. So this is what classical stands for here, without having access uh, to a quantum computer. Then I will move to the actual proposal uh, of computing this decomposition in a quantum computer. And then I will show, it, I will show you how uh, we can turn this proposal into a variational algorithm that uh, might be suited for NISC devices. Then I will show some uh, simulation results and numerical results. Uh, and then I, um, yeah, then I will move to, the, to some spin-offs because it turns out that uh, by modifying slightly uh, the original algorithm, uh, we can get new applications of the algorithm. And then finally, I will summarize uh, some conclusions and take home messages. Okay, so um, here we go. So let us suppose that we have uh, some pure uh, bi bipartite uh, state, uh, which is this one, psi. Uh, we have, uh, it's a state with, uh, with a number of qubits, and then we divide this state into two halves, or, or two parts. They, they don't need to be of the same size, and so these two parts will be labeled A and B. So we are just here um, expanding this state in the computational basis. These E sub I vectors are the computational basis vectors. So we are just having like a most general uh, decomposition in the computational basis. And then uh, most of you will know that uh, this can, this state, any state can always be uh, rewritten in such a way that we turn this double sum into a single sum. Um, where these lambda i coefficients are real, uh, because uh, if they were, they were complex, uh, the phase could always be absorbed into the definition of the vector, so we can make this real. And uh, the thing is that this uh, way of expressing the state is very convenient because uh, now, well, first we have a single sum instead of a double sum, but the thing is that now we have these lambda i coefficients, which are the Smith coefficients, this is called the Smith uh, decompo uh, decomposition, by the way. And these coefficients will give, uh, will tell us uh, how entangled um, A and B are. So here we haven't done anything. This is just a, another way of rewriting the state, but we haven't transformed it or we haven't done anything to it. Okay, so, so this is the goal. We are given an state and we want to find this decomposition. And we are going to propose uh, an algorithm, a quantum algorithm to do this. So classically, if you don't have a quantum computer, what, what's the best that you can do in general? Uh, well, the best thing you can do is you have to start from the tensor, from the knowledge of the tensor. Uh, and then from that, you can construct the, the, the density matrix, uh, just multiplying uh, ket and bra. And then you can get the reduced density matrices by tracing out uh, the other part. Um, so, um, okay, so these uh, reduced density matrices, when you diagonalize them, uh, you can write them in this uh, nice form, uh, diagonal form, in which you see that uh, 
eigen these eigen vectors uh, eigen vectors and eigen values are the uh, Smith vectors and the Smith uh, values that we are looking for. So classically, uh, if you are given a state, uh, you need to uh, find the reduced density matrices and then you have to diagonalize them. The thing is that uh, in general, this, this, the size of these matrices grows exponentially with the with subsistence size. So it grows exponentially with the number of qubits. Uh, so just getting the information from uh, about uh, what this matrix looks like, it uh, in general will, re will require an exponential effort. And then we will have to further diagonalize it, which uh, will also be an exponential effort in general. And look that, um, okay, here, uh, this chi, this is the Smith's rank, which uh, tells you uh, the number of Smith's coefficients which are different from zero. And the thing is that even if this uh, rank is polynomial, uh, you still will, you might still get an, a density matrix which is not sparse and which will give you a lot of uh, zero coefficients. But before you get to that, you will have to diagonalize the exponentially large matrix. So in general, this is a very hard problem. That's what I wanted <laughs> to make clear. Um, okay, so this is if we don't have a quantum computer, but now we are in an epoch in which uh, the first quantum uh, computer prototypes are, are arriving. And we all know that this, this time has been termed a noisy intermediate scale uh, quantum uh, era or NISC. And we know that this is characterized by devices with a low number of qubits, uh, typically for, uh, from 50 to a few hundred. Uh, we will have low coherence times, uh, we will have noisy gates and noisy measurements, and all this will limit the performance of our computers. And at, at this stage, we will not be able to perform uh, error correction, which means that many algorithms, like exact algorithms, like for instance, Shor's algorithm for factoring, uh, will not, uh, we will not be able to implement them in this kind of computers. So the question, of course, uh, uh, is can we do something with these niche computers? And it seems that we might be able to do something and, the, and for that we will make use of uh, variational quantum al algorithms, uh, which I will explain uh, a bit later. Okay, so here's the proposal. Uh, so remember, uh, we have our initial state, we haven't transformed it, we already have it written in a very nice Smith form. And then now we are gonna do the quantum computation. So what we are going to what we are proposing here is to uh, apply a unitary transformation, uh, which will be uh, made of two local unitaries. Of course, these unitaries unitaries will have to act uh, locally in each uh, subsystems because the entanglement spectrum, that is the Smith coefficients, uh, they must be preserved if we want to know them. Uh, so what we want to do here is. Uh, apply this local transformation to our original state such that uh, this Smith, uh, such that this uh, unitaries, the action of these unitaries is to transform these Smith eigenvectors, which, uh, so we don't know this, these vectors, but we want to transform them into computational basis states. So you see here the transformation up to a relative phase. The thing is that if we are able to achieve this transformation, uh, then from this state, if we just measure in the computational basis, uh, we can obtain uh, this, the square of this uh, coefficients, which is what we were looking for, just from the probability of measuring computational basis states. Okay. Um, moreover, uh, once this transformation uh, has been achieved, uh, we can also reverse the transformation to and realize that uh, this transformation was was uh, taking us from eigenvectors to computational basis vector. If we do the opposite, we, we will go from computational basis vector to eigenvectors. So all it takes to prepare these Smith eigenvectors on a quantum computers, one these unitaries are known, is to apply the inverse transformation to computational basis states, which are very easily prepared on a quantum uh, computer just uh, using X gates. And then you, we see that we can obtain these eigenvectors up to a global phase. So we obtain them in quantum form, quantum, uh, on a quantum computer, up to a global phase. And we see that, the, that if this transformation is achieved, uh, the key realization here is that uh, anytime we measure this state, 
we will find the same uh, result in the computational basis for both subsystems. So if we measure here 0, 0, 001 in this first subsystem, we will have to measure exactly the same 0, 0, 001 in the second subsystem if this transformation is achieved. Okay. Um, so this is very nice because if we have done this, then we will only need to measure in one single setting, namely the computational basis, uh, to obtain the Smith, uh, Smith values. Comp and this is, uh, this is very nice when you compare it to the three to the n uh, different settings or different observables, non-commuting observables that you will have to measure uh, for uh, uh, if you want to perform tomography, then obtain the, the reduced density matrix and then um, and then go on with the diagonalization. Uh, notice as well uh, here, it's important to notice that um, this reduction, this exponential reduction in the number of observables that we need to measure uh, has to do with the fact that, uh, okay, we are obtaining the uh, smith eigen vectors. We can uh, construct them on a quantum computer, but we are uh, retrieving no information whatsoever about the relative phases of these uh, vectors in the original state. So we are giving up uh, knowing this information uh, in order to uh, obtain this uh, exponential reduction, but we are still getting the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. Okay, this is very nice, but okay, one, how, how can we uh, know which uh, unitaries we have to apply? Because uh, we have no clue whatsoever what these Smith eigenvectors are. So, and here is the proposal to make the quantum singular value decomposer a variational algorithm. And as you probably know, uh, variational algorithms uh, are this kind of uh, hybrid quantum classical algorithms in which uh, we have a quantum computer, uh, which is uh, performing some quantum operation on an initial state. And then uh, you are measuring some observables. And from then you are, uh, getting the value of a, a given cost function or loss function, which will be fed up into a CPU, which will propose uh, some new um, parameters, a set of parameters for the circuit, because I forgot to mention, but uh, what we do is just basically put here some ANSAT circuit. Uh, we might have, have some clue about it or not, but uh, we can always uh, choose an ANSAT with some parameterized gates gates with typically rotations and then we can try to find in a variational way the optimal parameters and to do that of course we need a loss function and uh, here the, the the cost function that we are proposing is is this one here we are simply trying uh, to um, quantify how how far we are from getting the exact output coincidence that we would like to because remember that if we achieve the the desired transformation, we will always measure the same on uh, computational basis state on both subsystems. Therefore, what we just need to do is just quantify how far we are from, the, from that behavior. And for that, we will make use of what is called the Hamming distance. Uh, and uh, the Hamming distance, uh, here we, we have a we have a drawing uh, where it is explained. So if you have two bit strings like these two, then you will just uh, try, uh, you will look for the number of symbols that are different in both strings. So here, for instance, we have three uh, bits that are different. Therefore, these two strings have a Hamming distance, which is three. Okay, then uh, how we characterize our cost function, then we say, okay, let's do a bunch of measures. the Hamming distance between uh, two subsystems. And then if, if it's greater than zero, then add it to the cost function because we will, and in this way, we will be penalizing any departure from the exact co uh, output coincidence uh, that we are looking for. Um, okay, so, and then one important uh, remark about this cost function is that it is local. Uh, because when we are using the Hamming distance, uh, what we are doing is we are always comparing comparing pairs of qubits in the original, uh, in both subsystems. Uh, this means that uh, this cost function can be also expressed um, in Hamiltonian form. And we see that what we get is, is a two local Hamiltonian because uh, of what I just said, that we are comparing two qubits at a time. 
And uh, it turns out this might be important because uh, it has been shown uh, by the group of Patrick Coles in Los Alamos that um, that defining the, the, the cost function of a variational algorithm in a local form uh, avoids uh, barren plateaus for circuits of depth uh, upper bounded by log of n, where n is the number of qubits, which is not a lot, but still something. And of course, you don't have this if the, if, if the, co if the cost function is global. Like if you just make a fidelity between like two uh, n qubit states. Okay, uh, then this is the proposal for the algorithm. Then let me move to uh, to some small uh, numerical simulation that we've made. Uh, and for that, first of all, you need to define, to, find, to, to choose an AMSAT. Uh, in this case, in our case, we just choose a, a hardware uh, efficient AMSAT, uh, which uh, is an AMSAT uh, such that the, the gates that uh, are used uh, are native to to the current quantum computers that you or the quantum uh, are native to the quantum computer where you want to implement the algorithm and also like two qubits gates will only go um, on pair of qubits which are actually physically connected on your device so in this way you avoid overheads uh, due to uh, restricted uh, connectivity or 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 uh, or using a different gate set. Of course, uh, if one has a motivation for using a different ANSAT, a physically motivated ANSAT, uh, there is absolute uh, freedom in, in the choice of the ANSAT, so any, any ANSAT, uh, ANSAT can, be, can be used. Uh, so what we've seen, this is just, uh, I would call it like a proof of, of concepts uh, to, to check that the algorithm is, is well designed. So here we have taken random states of uh, six qubits, uh, and we have applied uh, the quantum singular value decomposure uh, to them, and uh, we have increased uh, the depth of the circuit from one layer to five layers, and we can see here uh, that uh, what I'm plotting here is uh, the von Neumann entropy that we compute from the Smith coefficients obtained from the algorithm to the exact uh, entropy. So first we see that uh, these states, these random states tend to have large entropy and therefore uh, large entanglement. And then what we see is that as we increase the number of layers, there's a good convergence towards the uh, expected value. And here we have the relative error uh, compared to the number of layers. And we see that uh, there is an exponential uh, decrease in, this, in, the, in the error. Uh, of course, these this simulations are for a small number of qubits. Uh, this indicates that uh, things are working, but of course, if we want to understand what to expect in terms of uh, performance um, as a function of, of depth or, or, of, or subsystem size or Smith rank, um, we definitely have to make simulation for a higher number of qubits. And well, we are working on that. So, so, so yeah, that's a still a uh, work in progress. All right. Uh, and now let me move uh, to uh, two spin-offs, two further applications of the QSBB, as I promised before. So the first one is a swap without quantum communication. Uh, so recall that transformation that the algorithm is achieving is, is, is this one. Um, so now uh, we will make use of the fact that uh, this uh, of the exact output coincidence here in computational basis. So the thing is that if we just re imagine that if we reverse uh, this, uh, okay, uh, up to this point here, um, we have, this is the QSVD, right? Here we have this, at this stage, uh, we have this state here. Then uh, if we apply the opposite uh, transformations, but in the opposite subsystems, uh, we will actually be achieving a swap. You see that, right? Because uh, we are acting on the same state and we are just exchanging uh, the unitaries. So the thing is that what we need to do that is classical communication of the optimal parameters. 
but if this if Alice and Bob, which might be um, uh, <laughs> as far away from each other as you want, um, in principle, uh, classical, they, they can locally train the QSVD, they can find the optimal parameters, then they can classically communicate them, and they can swap uh, their uh, states uh, without any quantum gate connecting the MDs. And I, I find this quite interesting um, at least in principle, uh, because it, it's some kind of, of teleportation that we can easily achieve uh, once a QSVD uh, has been trained. Then uh, another further application of the algorithm. Uh, once it's been trained again, we apply U and V, we are here, we get the, the, the state we are looking for. And then again, we will use uh, this uh, coincidence in computational basis to um, to make a, a all the uh, to 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 drive the state on on one subsystem to to the zero 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 state and by doing this what we have achieved is we have uh, compressed uh, the original state bipartite state into one single subsystem which is this one here then of course, if we wanted to recover the information, we would just have to uh, reverse uh, the transformation. So uh, with this, I think I will uh, conclude. So the take home uh, messages are, well, we have introduced a, a novel hybrid classical quantum algorithm uh, for computing a smith eigen values and a smith eigen vectors uh, of a bipartite a pure state and we've seen that this allows us to perform a swap operation between parties without any quantum gate connecting them so we can achieve a long distance swap uh, by classical communication of the optimal parameters and then finally uh, we've shown that uh, this qsvd uh, plus a series of, of synod gates is equivalent to to a quantum encoder and uh, with this i think i will finish um, I'll be glad to try to answer uh, any question that uh, you may have. So thank you. Thank you, Diego. Very interesting. So I think that we have a couple of questions in the chat. The first one from Matthias is uh, he asks, is this related with the Terence Tau theorem about getting the eigenvectors from eigenvalues? They also have no phase information about the eigenvalues. Uh, well, I have no idea. Uh, I think this relation he's talking about is, uh, yeah, when you have uh, the eigenvalues uh, from the matrix and from sub matrices, you can also get the eigenvectors. Uh, I have no idea whether this is related or not to this. I had never thought of it in these terms. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then we also have uh, a question from Nana. She said, uh, she said, I just saw Patrick Cole's new paper on getting the Baron Plateau via adding noise. Can you, Diego, comment on the noise robustness of your algorithm? Uh, well, this is something that I still, uh, I mean, we are doing simulations, uh, as I said before, with a higher number of qubits uh, to try to see how different um, uh, variables affect uh, the performance of the algorithm. Uh, one is, of course, uh, subsystem size. Uh, then the other is is is, uh, is depth. Then is a Smith's rank. And then, of course, is, is some. I mean, we are not uh, studying yet uh, noise, so uh, the answer is no. I cannot uh, give an answer. I think there uh, we might need um, numerical simulation. What I can say is is that any uh, robustness that uh, variational algorithms have against uh, errors like uh, against systematic errors in your computer, uh, then you are you are agnostic to them. Uh, if you are, uh, for instance, if you are doing a rotation uh, systematically wrong, and you want to do a pi rotation and you are doing pi plus epsilon, then you are variationally will, will adjust to pi minus, minus epsilon. So there is robustness uh, in this algorithm and in general in in variational algorithms against against no, noise. But uh, uh, beyond that. Uh, we haven't explored yet the robustness of uh, against noise of this algorithm. Okay, 
So uh, I, I have a question myself, a very quick one. And um, so this opens the possibility of measuring entanglement directly in the quantum computer in a quantum computer. So my question is, if uh, you have uh, studied the possibility of, uh, of other measures of entanglement, maybe using variational algorithms besides uh, Neumann entropy and, and Smith rank? Yeah. We have uh, we have checked uh, how to do uh, how to do it with the tangle, uh, which is a measure for three qubit states. Uh, so there is a very simple circuit that uh, that transforms a given state into its uh, canonical uh, form. And from and from that form, you can you can obtain the this entanglement measure. Uh, but other than that, uh, no. We, I mean, we have we have done this, but. Uh, but no, the thing is that I'm not sure about uh, many other ways of quantifying entanglement beyond partitions. Um, like a general. Actually, so, <laughs> so uh, one of the most famous, the tangle. So. Yeah, well, we did it for a tangle for sure, but this is restricted in the sense that it is just uh, three qubit states. Uh, so they are small states. Um, but uh, in general, it's a very difficult uh, problem because even in this uh, algorithm where we have like an exponential reduction in the number of observables to be measured, uh, still, if you are in a worst case scenario where uh, where you have a maximally entangled state and all Smith uh, coefficients are equal to one divided by the, di the dimension, so one divided, divided by two to the n, where uh, n is the number of qubits in the smallest subsystems, <laughs> I mean, just writing them down, <laughs> it's an exponential effort because you have an exponential number. So worst case scenario, this is like, like a really tough problem. Uh, but my my idea here is that, or my hope is that um, for many physically relevant uh, systems, uh, like uh, condensed matter systems, Smith's rank is not, uh, is not exponential in general. It's just polynomial. And in, the, in that case, we might hope, hope that there is a, an efficient unitary that achieves the, the desired transformation. Also, we will still have to, to find it, which uh, might not be efficient itself. Uh, we know about uh, local minima and so on and so forth. But the thing is that even if, if you have this uh, polynomial Smith rank, if you wanted to do it classically, like naively with, with the reduced density matrix and then diagonalizing it, the effort will be still be exponential. So it is in this kind of, of, of systems that we hope that this may, might be useful. OK, thanks uh, again, Diego. And I think we are finished. We are out of time. But uh, we can now stay longer and, uh, if you want to discuss a little bit about these two amazing talks. So thanks again, everyone, for coming. And uh, thanks, especially thanks to the speakers, Nana and Diego, for their very interesting talks. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks.